I'd like to thank Joseph, Joy and Michelle for the beautiful, inspirational. It direct and prepare my mind to share this message with you. Before I begin, I would like to stop for a moment of prayer. Father, we, I thank you, Lord, for your message, for the, your church, and for me personally. It helped me a long way. And as I share this message with the waiting congregation, may the words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight. In Christ's name. Amen. All the photographs are not very clear. It is intentional, I guess. Some are very old photographs. No pointer. Okay, the pointer is, is gone. But can you recognize? This was our church camp 1999 in Langkawi. So, I think Eric Rui is here. Eric Rui is here. And uh, much harder to see is uh, Pastor Wa. And uh, Jiwen, Jiwen, you're here. Can see it? Still very remarkable, still the same. I'm not sure where Adrian is though. It's quite blur, you know? I think fairer people harder to see. Yeah. Oh, okay, that, this is the advantage to be uh, on the darker skin. Yeah, and uh, well, I think the, that picture is easier to recognize it's up there, right? Um, the, the orchid was, is from Penang Hill. The Adventist advantage, it is a topic very dear to my heart since I joined church. In 1979, uh, that's a main, one of the main things that attracted me to church is that uh, from the angle of a non-Adventist, uh, they are envious of us having some advantages. What are the main advantages I'm going to share with you and uh, what are the reasons behind the advantages? And um, this is how the non-Adventists are looking at it. And personally, then I will share with you my personal perspective of the advantage as an Adventist that I, I gained from being an Adventist. In Him we live and move and have all our being. All our life belongs to God. All life belongs to Christ. And uh, that is the reason, you know, God actually wanted us to have to, 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 have, to be good in health, physical health, and in spirit, and in mind, and in soul. It is only when we have the balance of all three that we enjoy a lively Christian living. Christ wants us to have abundant life. I believe it's even now. And actually in John chapter 11, verse 11, it says that, you will never die. Those of you who believe in me will never die. Will never die. But some may sleep as what may happen during the course of this sermon. Okay, so some may sleep. Some others may sleep in Christ waiting for the call of the trumpet at the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that will be a joyful reunion day. But while we live, actually, we are specimens to be shown to the world. Uh, not just to the world, I think that is a bit too distant from us. But specimens to be shown in the Penang community, maybe in Mount Eskin, maybe in Chanjungbunga, maybe in Batu Fringi, maybe downtown in Georgetown, maybe in Island Glade. But we are specimens to be shown. Uh, what attract the non-Adventists most is actually, very importantly, is our health message. This is half of the National Geographic magazine, November 2005. Wait, yeah, November 2005. Okay, the, it's a main article named Secrets of Living Longer. 
cycle of longevity. It has been my talk into various churches, and this is the first time I'm sharing in this church. Uh, I've gone to many, many churches, many, many non-Adventist churches to share this message. Uh, Why Adventists live longer on this earth? It is not to prolong the sinner's life, but it's to demonstrate that God actually has a very good message that we can live through our life to show people around us. Physically, because physical is a little bit harder to argue. When we want to talk about mentally, uh, you can have a lot of argument. But physically, we are living longer than other people. Go to YouTube, type this title. You can see short clip, 10 minutes. You will finish the video clip before you sleep. It's very short, nine and a half minutes by the American Broadcasting Corporation and CNN also, they all have it, have nine minutes uh, to ten minutes. Documentary by BBC, Signs of the Times, have an article in, I think, in, in uh, June 2000, July or June 2006, on how to live to be 100 years old. And many a time in my work, when I share with my clients in the wellness, how you like to live to 100 years old? What do you think the response will be? Oh, no, 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 I can't imagine. Because all the hundreds of years old that they they have met so far are already, you know, walking with tongkat and uh, very hard to move around, need a lot of help. I, I, I find very few people desiring to live to 100 years. Don't talk about living eternally. I think they may think that they are having a daytime nightmare. <laughs> Living eternally, how could it be when at the age of 70s or 80s, we are already, we are already becoming, the human being are already becoming so frail. Why should we live eternally? This is uh, America. Just leave, as recent as July 30, 31, 31st of July. They are all talking about what the Seventh-day Adventists get right that lengthens their life expectancy. You know, all over the world, especially in the Western world, there are many research done on Seventh-day Adventists. And on the average, Seventh-day Adventists will live about 10 years longer on this earth compared to the general population. Okay? And this is highlighted in this article. They live a plant-based diet. They have a social network that reinforces right behavior. Take this idea of Sabbath very seriously. And I like the inspirational by Joseph Joy and Michelle just now. Be still. Be still. Be still on the Sabbath day. Be connected with God, with our Creator, with Christ, our Redeemer. Be still and listen to Him. He has a message for you. He has a message for you how, how you should live today, how you should talk to someone today, how you should respect another person today, how you should care for another person today. You know, may we be transformed by His love. May we be transformed by His love. And teach us how to love better. You know, joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Teach us how to love better. I think that is, I think, more important in my Adventist perspective, how I think the advantage is that we have this reminder that easily can come to us if we stretch out our hand. Be still. Be still on the Sabbath day. Be connected with Him. If you have been just a seven-day Adventist, not an all-week-long Adventist, at least be still on Sabbath day and be connected to Christ on the, sev- on the seventh day. Reflect on your life, reflect on my life, and listen to God and be still. That's so important. My, Aven- my non-Adventist client is really envious of me because... Uh, yeah, you seem to be taking things so easily. 
Yes, because we have hope, we have the advent hope. That is why we can, if we, are, if we become still and be connected to God. Now, of course, uh, the researcher wants more concrete answer than just being still. Being still is very difficult for our present generation because we are always bombarded with many, many items, media, computer games, social network. It's hard to be still. It's hard to keep our mind still. It's hard to live for the present moment to be just connected to God. Let's come to the physical health. I think that's what people are more attracted to. This lady was one of the main characters in the 2005 National Geographic article. Her name is Marge Jetton. In 2005, she was 101 years old. She has a morning routine of carrying weights and uh, stay on the cycle, stay on a stationary bicycle. After that, she would go around and do community work, collect some old magazine for old folks in the old folks home. So she drive in her SUV, that's in 2005. In 2009, when I went to the Healthy Lifestyle Conference in Geneva, I knew she was still moving around, uh, but I believe she has stopped driving then. I must check with Dr. Yen whether she's still around. Now it's about 10 years later. Uh, is she still around? No, I, I, I don't think so. She, lives, uh, she, she used to live during 2004. Uh, she, she, she was living in Lomlinda. Okay? But she was driving. At 101 years old, she was driving SUV, taking magazine to old folks' home. Right. And I had the privilege of meeting this gentleman, which I shared with Dr. Zoe. Uh, he is 11 years senior to Dr. Zoe in, her medi in the medical school, Dr. Moses Christian. At the age of 82, he's still working in Romalinda, and he's still running marathons. Marathons. He's still running marathons. He started money running marathons after age 60. But all my orthopedic colleagues discouraged me from running marathons and hiking because actually it injures our knee and we may need knee replacement in future. But he is still running marathon. I had the privilege of meeting him about three Sabbaths ago. Yeah, three Sabbaths ago, yeah, Jivian? Yes. A very quiet man, quiet gentleman, Dr. Moses Christian. Uh, 30 years senior to me in the medical college. I Google for Adventist health scientific articles, 117,000 on the Google list. Of course, I can't check all of them and verify they are all scientific. But I can assure you, when I was in medical school in 1985, those days where actually internet was not available yet, and I went to the library to look for journal articles about actually about a vegetarian diet. I was, uh, I was pursuing health. Remember, I was attracted to the Adventist advantage of health, physical health. So I was looking for some proof. In 1985, so I went to look for the index baticus for is vegetarian diet better? Was there any scientific evidence? I found one, I found one, in 1985. But today, in 2014, you just Google 117,000. Seventh-day Adventist is the most well-studied religious group for health reason, for health reason. Okay, I quote a few uh, big studies. Adventist mortality study. This happened in the 1950s, 60s. Adventist Health Study 1, which happened in the 70s and 80s. Adventist Health Study 2, which started about 10, 12 years ago. And it's still ongoing. Adventist Health Study is still ongoing. And this 
has been supported by the National Institute of Health of America, which is like our Ministry of Health in Malaysia. The government of the United States of America actually put money to Loma Linda University Medical Center to learn about what are the important factors that the Adventists are getting right so that they can control, they can share this data and these practices with the rest of the American so that they can reduce the healthcare expenditure. The U, U, United States, USA uh, health budget now, I think GDP probably about 17% is, uh, is, is used for health, for healthcare. And still there are about, I think it's about 20% not covered by, by insurance. But then with the Obamacare, things are changing slowly. The coverage of people is bigger, but coverage per person becomes smaller. But with the Adventist lifestyle, you need less coverage for hospital care. Just to summarize, to keep it simple, uh, if you want to learn more about it, I think a, a lot of the church members, senior church members like Dr. Zovi and Helen and uh, Dr. Eric Lee all can share with you the details. Uh, so I also sometimes turn my health talk as seven habits of the highly healthy people. Do not smoke, be, physical, be, be active physically every day or exercise if you work at a sedentary job. Put family first, be part of a social network, be active, be part of the church. Eat a plant-based diet, keep the Sabbath, have faith, have faith in God. Or, you know, there are, this is the way uh, the non-Adventists look at it. I, I go to Trinity Methodist Church, I, 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 I tell like that, including telling them keeping the Sabbath. I go to Bukit Matajam Methodist Church or Sungai Patani Methodist Church, I tell them the same thing. Agrinia Church in Sungai Ara, Wesley Church next door to us. Same thing, I will show them this in the full presentation. Oh, by the way, Children's Choir in 2003. And uh, Joseph, you are here. There, there, there. Joseph, and Jonathan Yo is next to you. In the Ministry of Healing, Page 127 summarizes the pen of, from the pen of the pen of inspiration where we got the idea. I often tell my clients that, you know, Adventist doctor is a biased doctor. I'm not very scientific because I'm more sure, I, I'm very sure what, we, what I'm sharing is right. Unlike scientific research, some day will tell you chocolate is good, another day tell you chocolate is not good. Or egg yolk, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's no good. Um, but I, I got a difficult question yesterday. Is apple cider good? I'm not sure. Let me go and look for the scientific and also the, from the pen on inspiration. Actually, I told my client my answer. I will not tell you. The first popular Adventist health uh, program was coined by Wima College in the 1960, probably 1968. It's called New Start. Nutrition, exercise, water, sunlight, temperance, air, rest, and trust in God. And if you read very carefully in the Ministry of Healing, page 127, you'll see that in this sentence. Okay? Now, actually, there are many other, there are many other programs. Evolution, transformation, of the similar thing called New Start. Uh, as we continue to, to, to use a program, we realize that the New Start focuses too much on physical program. Well, the rest and the trust in God can vary a little bit, but uh, we, we miss some of this like positive attitude, uh, giving people hope instead of criticizing people, you know? Trust in the loving God, submission, choice. You know, these are very critically important. So, come the new pattern. In the Florida hospital, they run the creation health, which very important. The number one thing is choice. If you do not choose to eat a plant-based diet, just knowing a plant-based diet is not going to help you. If you, do not, if you know exercise is good, but you do not choose to go out and do the exercise, you are not going to be any. Choice is the most important. Choose to submit yourself to God. Choose 
to keep the Sabbath day holy, choose to be still and be connected to God daily. If you don't choose to, if you don't choose to think positively, you will not be positive. You will always think negatively. Celebration health is promoted by General Conference. The first C is also choice. Then we have the CHIP Complete Health Improvement Program, previously known as Coronary Health Improvement Project. Win Wellness, 8 Week to Wellness. Win Wellness, uh, our, our mission is promoting this. So if you want to learn about health program, you join the mission program, they will train you to do Win Wellness. Brief Free is, very well, Brief Free is a well-known stop smoking program. Uh, it evolved from the five-day stop smoking program, which is actually well-known in the Ministry of Health in Malaysia and even in some academic, uh, academic centre like Unisip Putra, Malaysia, the leading smoking expert in Malaysia, uh, Prof. Lekras Rampal, still remember Penang Adventist Hospital as a forefront in tobacco control. If you want to learn, you can always go into the Winter Health Summit in the North, Northern American Division. Winter uh, Health Summit always usually is held in Orlando, Florida because of the Florida Hospital. There are a few Spirit of Prophecy books that actually helped me to understand the health program better. Ministry of Healing is a key one. It is written as a book. Council on Health, Diet and Food, Medical Ministry, Council on Health, during medical school, uh, I have the privilege of getting this book from the union and, and started reading it during medical school. Recently, I read My Personality and Character and f I find it helpful to my own personal life. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31 says, Whatsoever we eat and drink and whatsoever we do to our body, do it to the glory of God. I, I like to add that uh, whatsoever thing you put into your brain, no? how you think, and what you say and how you act, how you carry yourself, do it to the glory of God. For your own sake, for those people around you. I think it's very really important. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15 says that, you know, whatever you want to do, do it in the spirit of love. And you are not sure, always give people the benefit of doubts. And uh, I think that is the greatest advantage, advantage that I find as an Adventist myself, personal, my personal journey. As I walk this Christian walk, I realize that um, while physical health is very, very important, the Bible emphasizes it, our church emphasizes it, because it is so important that uh, if we live uh, good physical, in, in good physical shape, we really can glorify God. But if we can really live in a better state where, where our mind still can run well and we can be very gracious and loving. I think that's the most powerful Adventist advantage message to the people around you. And as I live, I realize that, you know, the physical structure can't sustain and continue to become better. As long as we live in this earth, as long as we live in this sinful world, we will have to face the deterioration or the effect of sin. And we, I, I, I can't become stronger and stronger physically. And in a book, I found that uh, someone wrote it in uh, The Road Less Travel and Beyond by Scott Peck. But you can, your, your mind can become better. You can love better. You can become more understanding. You can, and suddenly I realized that uh, as we live, Yes, indeed we can. And I read it in Tuesday, in Tuesday with Mori that uh, even facing physical deterioration, facing death, uh, a, a non-religious person could take it so graciously and face death so peacefully. I think that is a hallmark. There should be a hallmark of the Adventists who have the advantage of the special connection and special special connection with the pens of inspiration and have all these messages coming from God. So, do you enjoy the Adventist advantage that God has intended for us? Can those in contact with you feel it that you have this advantage? Are they attracted to the advantage that you are showing? May we 
be connected to God so that we can impact Penang community with the Adventist advantage.